Well, we're going to do a video on replacing the weld leads on a Chicago Electric welder. It's a MIG 170. Uh, it's part number 68885. I took a lead from Chucky 2009 and uh, got to looking at their at their equipment and the 68885 lead is not covered on their website. Any number of other Chicago Electric uh, machines uh, are covered. But uh, looking at the lead from the video, I think we're we've got the right one. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and place it on this machine. And if it doesn't work, well, you'll never see this video. If it does work, then you'll have an option and also communicate this back to the vendor. Let them know that this uh, that this lead set does fit. But we'll see. One thing we haven't done yet. I still want to upgrade the ground. Um, the ground clamp is not of high quality. The wire is fairly small as well. So I think we'll upgrade the, uh, uh, the ground lead at some point. But for today, we're going to replace the lead. Now we bought the lead from uh, USA Weld. It's usaweld.com is their website, which you can see here. And then uh, the equipment's uh, HCP America equipment. So we're going to... Uh, we're going to try to install this and let you watch. Hopefully we get it right. Um, besides the fact that my lead was uh, melted through on my daughter's last welding project for the fair. Uh, there's actually a rash union there holding the uh, purge line together because it melted through. Uh, that's one issue. And the other one is that these leads uh, are six feet, six foot leads, uh, power lead. And it's just, you know, it's, not always adequate for the job. The leads that uh, I got from HTP are uh, 10, it's a 10 foot lead. And I'm gonna show it to you here and also give you the part number. Uh, here's the, the lead system. And uh, part number is 812-958-HTP gun with gas valve. Um, not gonna open this up for you, but if I did, you would see that this is a higher quality piece of equipment. Um, for sure, a higher quality piece of equipment. I also bought uh, some of the, the, the disposables here for the uh, tip, and uh, so I've got those to stock. We're fixing to start on the framework for a 1951 Ford F1. We need to have a good, reliable welder to do that with. Now, many of you might uh, wonder about the, the MIG-170. The MIG-170 is it's a good welder. My daughter's won two grand champions at the fair championships at the fair with this uh, using this welder on welding projects that she's completed um, so it's it's more than adequate to do the job I'm not a welder um, and so it's uh, simple enough yet adequate to perform the simple tasks that I require of it and uh, so again we're going to upgrade the lead as one is burnt through and the other one is pretty short and uh, so we're going to upgrade the, the main lead and gun and I'm going to put you on high so you can look down the process and uh, we'll go through it together. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with the install on this thing. Um, the, case, the case has 13 screws in it that we need to take out on this side and on the top. Don't want to take. You don't want to take these screws out of here on the hinges because the hinge is going to come off with the case. So one more here. Alright, so the case should be free to come off. So we're going to just it up like so and reveal the insides. Now I have already removed the spool of wire. It's normally here. And so the spool is removed and we pulled the wire uh, back through back through the old lead here. And so that's clear. So let me move the camera. Well, let's talk first about what we've got to do. Uh, we've got to remove from this side up here by the drive system, the wire drive system. Uh, we've got to remove access or remove tubing so we can screws. So we can get to this tubing and also so we can get to the main lead the main power lead and also the remote control for the uh, the, the trigger controls actually start start the arc 
and so we'll start that now. Uh, before I do that, just be real clear, make sure your welder's unplugged. This one is unplugged. There's a lot of stuff in here that can bite you. So let's go ahead and move the camera and we'll get started. All right, well, we're going to get started. We're going to begin by disconnecting the power, uh, the main power lead to to the uh, the whip. And so that, in this case, because I have a set for gas welding, is the uh, connects to the red side. It's the red wire. It's very specific. Torch cable is red. Ground cable is black. The torch cable. So we're going to pull it back through to the other side and try to get it up out of the way. The torch cable goes down behind some control boards and whatnot, so I'm just going to pull it right on up so it's up out of the way of these wiring and boards. So there's the torch cable. Then the next thing we want to do is want to remove the the uh, purge gas cable or purge gas tubing. So you want to push in on the blue connector that you see here. Uh, it won't come out now, but you push in, pull, and it will come out. We're also going to feed it back through. It comes through a hole here. And uh, also a wire tie, I'm sure a wire tie on this side as well. And so we'll pull it up. So we have those disconnected. Now we're going to go ahead and disconnect uh, the, the, the retaining plate here on the wire feed. We're going to be with these two small screws, start there, and uh, take those out. These are sheet metal type screws into plastic. Please be careful with them. You can potentially strip out your plastic, and that would be no fun. So we'll get those out of here. And then when you take these two larger screws that you see up here in the front, take those out of here. And got my power driver for that. Fairly long screws. Um, they go all the way through uh, into the metal. You can actually see them from the other side of the, of the dividing plate here. No worries, they aren't the only two holding this block on. There's also two on this side. We're not going to mess with those. So, <clears throat> we should now be able to remove this block out of the way, looking carefully at what we have. A couple things you're going to note those wires that were, some of which we've already disconnected, we're going to disconnect the last ones in a few minutes. Uh, they push through a hole in the divider uh, to the opposite side. And then this, this is your, uh, your wire feed tube. And you can look at the placement of it relative to the, uh, the drive wheel, drive wheels. And make sure that you get a similar placement whenever you put it back in. So that little guy just comes right out of there. So let's go ahead and move the camera to the other side and let's take a look at what we need to disconnect on that side. All right, on this side things get a slight bit trickier. Um, as I said, we've got the, the main lead uh, disconnected that it goes to the torch and then we've got the gas line disconnected it goes to the torch the remaining wire which you can see comes through the divider plate comes down here and is part of this plug-in to this board we're going to go ahead and pull this up a little ways i think it's probably easier to work on from the top than the bottom and hopefully you can see and note that there are basically four wires going to this this plug-in um, two of them go to the torch and then two of them uh, come from elsewhere come from a, a uh, Transformer there in the back. So we don't want to mess with those but We need to deal with these since these plug in is this in this group We're gonna have to couple our wires on our new torch to these wires So we're gonna cut this fairly proud. So we have extra wire so we basically just have to cut them off there. If I can find something to cut with, we're good. But we've just got to cut these, cut this um, trigger from the torch. So we're going to leave the wire a bit long, um, and we'll cut it off like that. So this is where we're going to reconnect our wires um, later. One of the nice things is this switch is just a momentary switch, so it's not directional which lead you tie to which wire uh, will make a difference in the operation. So now that we have all of the wires and tubes that come through there, we're going to go ahead and push them out this opposite side. You can see it do that. 
and then it's time to remove the old torch and so let's get on with taking the old torch off okay so it's uh, all pretty pretty well there now here's our leads tubes wires here's our uh, wire sleeve and now we just need to disconnect this little rubber plastic uh, piece drum it uh, from the hole here and just gotta press these little ears so it disengages the face and so there you go the old lead is out and we're done now we're going to save our old lead in case we were to have an urgent need um, this does function it is short and it does have a, a coupler in it but uh, it's functional, so we'll, we'll hang on to it in case we need it. So now it's time to bring out the new torch. Um, the new torch, something of a general use torch, when I say that, it fit a number of things. And, uh, and so different connections will be longer than necessary, maybe, and things like that, but that's okay. Another, another notable thing, difference is that you'll note the, uh, the torch lead, torch cable on this one is black versus the original marking on it which was red so i actually think i have some red heat shrink so i'm going to put some red heat shrink on there just to maintain the color code between the original machine and the notes on the machine um, and the torch the torch leaves um, so let's see if we can install this one thing i failed to do was to get get the uh drum it Drown it off the old leads, this little wonder. And uh, so we're going to put this onto the, the new torch. It's going to go on just like that. You'll notice our gas leads quite long. It's all good. We can cut. We can cut anything and make it smaller. But you can, no matter how many times you cut it, it's not going to get any longer. Any, yeah, any longer. So we'll push all these through here, and then we'll push all of those through here. Now before I fully engage that grommet, I'm going to go ahead and move the wires and tubes through to the other side, just so that they're kind of out of our way, and probably easier than once it's all in there. So we'll go ahead and start by feeding, feeding these trigger wires through. By the way, I don't want to claim to be very knowledgeable. Um, Turkey 2009 did this uh, video taped the guys at USA America doing this job on a uh, 68 886 model Chicago electric welder and it's very similar so for those of you who specifically are looking for the 68 885 you'll have this but it's not particularly novel and that was really slick I just realized this Grommet has a split right here, so you don't have to feed it through and just stick it straight on like this. So let's go ahead and as we push this in, we'll pull all our wires and tubing snug. Um, and we've got to deal with this, deal with the wire feed cable here. So what we're going to do is we're going to engage this little wonder here for now draw it in there and then we're going to manipulate the wires and tubing and such so that we can get good alignment there you go like that of our tube we go in a little further and we want to kind of mimic um, the distance that we had earlier on the wire feed tube I also want to push these wires a little more out of the way make sure that they're not limiting success for us here and that looks pretty good so i'm happy with the placement so let's go ahead and reinstall our our plate this plate serves to hold this wire piece in place so we want to make sure that it's in place when we engage it and put it in there and we want to make sure it stays there while we tighten up our screws isn't necessarily as easy as it looks there it is it's right there not so hard after all 
So we're going to go ahead and start by putting in uh, the two smaller screws for now. And hopefully that's going to make sure that our wire feed sleeve stays put where we want it to. And we're going to keep an eye on it as we do it. Hope I don't get in your way too badly doing the job here. This is all about you. It's also all about me getting my welder right. I can get started on my project. Uh, for those of you who might follow the channel, 1951 Ford F1 pickup truck. Uh, we built the motor for it quite a while back now, Ford 302. And we're preparing, hopefully in less than a week, we're going to have a party. So you strip down the old truck and we're going to strip the frame down and hopefully you'll see the frame sitting right where we're standing right now pretty soon so you'll notice i'm putting these in uh, not with my my screw gun i just want to make sure i don't get too carried away and strip any screws that a lot of these things screw in the plastics and the like always just a little leery of that so we're going to look at our placement placement's good here up against the feed rollers our tubing and wiring we fed through the opposite side and so we're going to go the opposite side and continue with the install okay so we're going to deal with things now on this side of the welder again we pulled through basically three sets of uh, wires and tubes that we need to deal with we're going to start by running the main wire down I'm going to run it down back behind the control panel where it came from and then we're going to bring it just go ahead and bring it down now at the bottom for the moment and then we're going to turn it around and push it back through the hole that goes to the, uh, the lead lugs on the other side all right so that's that's there then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to deal with long piece of tubing you don't necessarily need to deal with tubing that long so we're going to get a razor blade here and we're going to shorten that tubing up just to make it a little easier to push through as you can see this tubing is basically has to come down along here through a hole and the right about here so we've got you know, considerably more than we need so for now we're going to shorten it a bit just to make it easier to push around we're going to go through some wire ties and the like so we're just going to take a piece of uh, take a razor blade here and we're going to shorten this tube up you don't want to you don't want to use plier ends which are kind of common people just uh, cut them with uh, you know, dikes wire cutters um, and, uh, and you can do it but I think it's just a lot cleaner finish on the end of the tubing and the nature of the connector um, the cleaner that tubing uh, the better you're going to get a seal so we're back through the other side and the last thing to deal with sadly I don't have what I would really ideally want to deal with these wire connections so we're going we're gonna to make a change I'm going to do it a little bit differently than I would have preferred um, on here what comes on here are some and basically spade connectors um, so if we had the, the mating piece that fit up in there wire tied on to the wires that are existing on our system here uh, be quite an easy connection to make but I don't have that kind of connector and I would like to finish this now so what we're going to do is we're going to change these connectors out and we're going to use different type we're going to use this type which is a pin and a mate like so and so we're going to go ahead and take off these connectors that come with it I recommend uh, that you just remember unlike me myself remember to go get mating spades for this and uh, make life a bit easier but we're gonna do it our way it'll all get done all the same I'm going to show you one of these find my pliers let me show you installing one of these and we'll bother you with both um, so we're going to also 
take our razor blade that we just used and we're going to split this split this shrink or wire device here so that we can get in here to these two wires pull them out enough to work with and so we'll trim that off hoping that you've got a good enough finish point to be able to see what I'm doing here okay so we'll work off of these two wires and off of these two wires as was the case in the HTP demonstration video I watched that Chucky 2009 put up we're going to go ahead and put blue to blue and brown to red it does not matter you can swap them about uh, again it's just a momentary contact switch so it doesn't have any polarity issues. So we're going to take our pliers now. We're going to remove, start with blue just for fun. We're going to remove this connector that comes with it. We're going to strip back a chunk of the wiring, enough for that connector that we're using. It looks like it's about 16 gauge. 16 gauge certainly worked. These are 16 gauge connectors that I have here. Well, I can't remember the exact number, 16 to 14, 16 to 12, I don't remember. But they are treated for this. And we're going to use this portion. And we're going to crimp the wire. And just like that. So we're going to do that on the other three locations. One thing I tend to like to do, weird as it is, um, if polarity did matter, what I would do is I would put opposite ends what I mean is if polarity were to matter you could just take this end and put this attachment if I can get this to go in here put this attachment on this end therefore you couldn't get the, the uh, you couldn't get the polarity draw but again in this case it doesn't really matter but that is my habit when i use these things just so that i don't switch wires unintentionally so we'll do this in we'll plug it up we'll get right back with me okay so we have this wire put together and we've slid it back to the back there and here's the uh here's the plug so we're going to replug the plug back to the control board here maybe hopefully and uh, there it is so that's reconnected so our trigger lead um, should be good to go and so now we have two more hookups on the other side we're done we're ready to give this thing a test drive so let's see how this goes okay so the remaining bits here here's the power lead as I indicated before it is black lead and uh, the Originally had it snubbed as a red lead, so we're going to take care of that a little bit later with some some uh, red heat shrink. <coughs> not sure actually I have any big enough for that, but we will figure out something. And then we need to put this uh, hose connector in. Notice I, I did cut it a little bit long, so I want to make sure it was all passed through everything along the way. And put it through this wire tie, it was also through here on this side there we go now we're gonna cut it again and actually cut it a bit shorter to fit there you go razor blade good job so there you go it's now reconnected now we can reload our spool of wire I'll run the wire up the um, up into the torch and we can test out this thing so let's get that done I guess I should mention I've now got the wire fed in across the wire feed roller. I haven't quite hadn't fed it into the uh, torch yet, but uh, yeah, last thing I'm going to do actually is put the case back on. Won't bother you with that. 13 screws goes back on the way it came off, and so we'll get it closed up and give it a test. All right, well, we've got the uh, welder all ready to test drive. I actually did a small test drive weld right there, you can see. Um, we're getting gas, as you can hear. Um, we're getting wire feed, for sure. 
and we're getting our our main power so seems to be functional let's uh let's run a bead and see it's just a couple of pieces of uh, the 316th plate i think just some scrap plate i had here from other projects a welding project from the fair so we're gonna give this thing a weld and see how it turns out one thing that i normally do again i'm no welder but uh, uh this is my this is my anti-stick for the nozzle pam high temperature for grills um, generally we just give it a good hose down there in the end and uh, seems to work well enough certainly minimize the amount of uh, build up we had on the tip previously so we uh, just trim this in a little and let's go to welding and see how she does you're probably just going to see a whole bunch of light flash but when I get done with the bead you'll be able to see so here we go Okay, ground not doing really good. book not being a welder you gotta love that uh, works beautifully uh, the feed rates you know wire feed out good um, that's where I restarted and uh, we're not getting a lot of slag build up in the end which probably wouldn't be the fault of the disposables but more my fault does come with the uh, the tip it comes with was a 0.8 millimeter which is uh, 32 thousandths inch tip I actually bought an extra 32 thousandths I bought new cones diffusers I just bought the the disposables whenever I was picking up the uh, picking up the the torch so I love it um, it works wonderfully uh, made me look like a pretty decent welder for what little bit we welded there and uh, I could uh, I could show that off to most people and uh, certainly we got good penetration on the weld and uh, I'll be glad to weld my truck if it looks like that so thank you for watching my suggestion you've got a MIG 170 the model 68885 um, order the part number that I listed earlier uh, if you want a replacement torch uh, that's part number uh, 81295B. Well, I said eight earlier. I apologize. 81295B, which is a HTP gun with gas valve, 15 series, 10 foot long. Go to usaweld.com or uh, it's uh, made by HTP America Inc. As a matter of fact, contact number if you'd like it's 800 872 9353. Great torch love it looking forward to using it on my truck coming up uh just uh in just in the next week or two so next thing ground lead definitely time for improvement on this ground lead ground lead with Cummings machines are quite limited uh that's why i was having trouble initiating spark a while ago or initiating arc a while ago so uh definitely be probably not get online order a new ground lead resolve that uh that issue and then hopefully we're moving forward and we've got a good welder, an adequate welder, to do what we need to on our new truck, our old truck. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Take care.